Chester, let me uh, repeat the statement that China will crush any foreign incursion into its sovereign territory, including in the South China Sea. Strong words uh, from a military official from China on the heels of the 10th BCM, a bilateral consultation meeting uh, between the Philippines and China. Is this a calculated uh, move from China or uh, did, that, did that slip around? Um, was it, it an effort to show some teeth? I mean, what, what do you uh, sense here? Well, uh, for me, it's uh, terrifying. And uh, at the same time, China is uh, terrified. Uh, uh, let's uh, put it into context. Um, first off, uh, the U.S. has uh, signified its um, support to the Philippines uh, because of the uh, uh, ignition of uh, a showdown that might happen in the uh, third hot spot in the Sabina Shoal. And we know for a fact that uh, since uh, the U.S. is adamant in its uh, ironclad commitment to help the Philippines, and that's the reason why uh, perhaps China feels uh, that uh, this is um, a, a red line for them, uh, mainly because uh, they think that uh, uh, First, there are many uh, hindrances and challenges uh, for them to get all the uh, maritime cage first uh, uh, in the Philippines. Uh, first, the main objective there is to at least uh, what would uh, lead them to uh, Ayungin National. And uh, since uh, they already have the mischief, uh, that would be uh, a trio for them to contain the islands uh, and maritime features of the Philippines. Remember, um, uh, the, 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 the statement is very strong, but at the same time, uh, I think uh, China is also terrified of uh, why, uh, what might uh, the U.S. can offer to the Philippines. Because uh, I think um, the, the U.S. is not blocking this time around. Uh, they knew that um, they've been asking the Philippines to support us. It just so happened that the Philippines wanted to take the lead. And at the same time, uh, Manila would also put into consideration its uh, de-escalatory uh, tactics uh, and strategy as, as of the moment. Uh, I think those were the considerations. But uh, since uh, China couldn't get in and uh, take what they want, um, I think uh, they would use uh, a show of force and strong words. And I think we will uh, see more world wars uh, coming from China this time around. Well, Chester, since the last time we spoke, uh, the hot spot or the flashpoint mm. has I mean, we know that it's the entire sea, right? But from the Ayungin Shoal, it kind of have, has mm. moved to the Escada Shoal. Hundreds and hundreds of uh, uh, Chinese boats, combination of CCG, militia, and even PLA Navy vessels over there. Um, mm. What do you make of uh, this move to the Escada Shoal from the Ayungin Shoal since the Ayungin Shoal is covered by the BCMs? Ah, yes. Um, you see the one versus hundred here. Uh, that uh, the, the Philippines represents uh, to show off its uh, bravery and courage uh, against the armada of uh, Chinese uh, vessels. Uh, but uh, going back to the question, uh, the jumping point uh, from uh, um, Ayungin Shoal to uh, Escoda, remember that uh, Escoda or Sabina Shoal is the largest reef amongst those uh, three uh, reefs uh, from the ship to uh, Ayungin to uh, uh, Escoda. Mm. And by invading es Escoda, that would uh, become very strategic uh, for the China Coast Guard and the uh, People's Liberation uh, Army Navy, mainly because uh, it's closest to mainland Palawan. And uh, they can use it for uh, their uh, anti access area denial. Because um, every time we do the resupply and provisional uh, mission, that's where our vessels would uh, pass through. So if they can contain and lock uh, the gates of uh, Escoda, then definitely there would be no resupply. And that would lead to hunger and lack of supply for our marine contingent in the uh, Ayungin Shoal. And I think that would also lead to more ramming uh, that would uh, allow the two ships, uh, BRP uh, Magbanwa and BRP Sierra Madre to sink and perhaps the worst case scenario is to talk to it. So, you know, uh, those are um, um, military tactics that I think uh, China are thinking uh, so far because uh, that's the easiest way for them to do. Uh, remember, uh, China uh, has a weak legal approach when it comes to its claims 
um, in the South China Sea. Manila has an upper uh, hand when it comes to uh, legal approach. What uh, China is doing is the right, is right, uh, right approach, showing that uh, they, they can flex their ma military muscles and uh, uh, by using the Coast Guard um, force, I think uh, that is their way of uh, convincing us to surrender our ships uh, in those um, maritime features. 207 is the last count. Uh, as of mm. last week, 207 Chinese vessels were monitored around Escoda Shoal, uh, as Sean said, a mix of PLA, maritime militia, and Chinese Navy boats. Um, and we were also talking to, uh, I know your friends too, uh, Richard, about this. And he said the mm. ramming incident from a few weeks ago was actually, we shouldn't see it as su in such a negative light. We should actually see it as a win for the Philippines because that means China yeah. is worried that, you know, they might, that, that he, he saw it as a win for us in Ayungin, and their word, we mm. might replicate it in Escoda as well. Um, what are your thoughts? Are, are you kind of on the same wavelength? That's what you said, right? You said yeah. uh, they are terrified too, mm. as, as, as much mm. as we are. Is but that terrified what you meant? of yeah. what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, that, that's the pointer because uh, they are using the force uh, because um, they could not. Um, uh, gain the, the trust of the international community uh, using uh, law fair. And um, the might is right uh, approach is um, something that uh, China is using right now as a leverage to uh, uh, contain and uh, get all those uh, um, maritime features by the Philippines. Uh, I do agree with, uh, with Richard that, uh, of course, um, this is... Uh, um, a winning uh, sympathy for the Philippines, uh, for our uh, friends and allies, uh, mainly because uh, the more China bullies us, the more China tries to uh, ram our vessels, uh, I think uh, we are getting um, support uh, from the international community. I think uh, what the Philippines is doing right now is to uh, sustain and maintain its uh, advocacy on rules-based norms. Remember, we cannot uh, do the same thing uh, with China, mainly because uh, it's uh, contrary uh, to our uh, advocacy for rules-based norms. Uh, of course, there were uh, debates um, in the defense and security sector uh, asking our uh, contingents to do those um, brazen tactics also by ramming uh, Chinese vessels or perhaps uh, doing uh, those um, uh, water cannon. But we cannot do it mainly because uh, of our position that rules-based norms should be uh, the norms of the world. And I think um, that, uh, that is something that China cannot understand because they, they see uh, force as uh, that justifies their means. Now, um, some uh, observers uh, in the region might also think that this is a weakness from the Philippines, um, despite the support uh, and uh, support from uh, friends like the U.S., uh, Australia and uh, Japan, uh, that uh, they are willing to do joint sale with us, joint resupply uh, for that uh, matter. But uh, uh, right, right now, we are exposing all the possibilities. Uh, in my uh, few statements earlier, that uh, we wanted to, to show to the world that uh, we can lead, we can do it on our own. Uh, but uh, I think um, the government uh, should also reconsider the option of... Uh, getting the support of our friends and allies because, of course, um, these uh, allies um, are really adamant of uh, showing their support also for the, for the Philippines. Just so there, let's wait and see uh, what happens. Right. Let me interject. Since you're already uh, on that topic, last Friday we were spoke. Uh, we we had on the show uh, AFP spokesperson Colonel Padilla. Uh, we asked her this question, and she she has said that uh, of course, like what you have just said, that we have decided to take this on our own. Uh, that it might be viewed as escalatory if we ask for our allies for escorts. She um, put forward instead that maybe we can ask them for other things like more boats because um, they have rammed a, a lot of our fleet already, and it's dwindling i think the a lot of them have to be repaired uh, what do you think of that should we be more aggressive in asking for more boats for example that teresa magbanoa was from japan um the reason why we cannot decide yet on the joint uh, supply or um joint um, 
uh, uh, sale uh, with our friends, mainly because of some legal impediments. Uh, if we look at the basis of the Mutual Defense Treaty, uh, particularly on Articles uh, 2, 3, and 4, where uh, it tells that uh, there should be consultation and the very definition of uh, armed attack, uh, those are um, some of the things that impedes us to uh, allow our friends to, to uh, do the joint uh, resupply or uh, joint uh, sale. But uh, on the other hand, uh, the proposition of um, our uh, um, military yeah. folks uh, mm -hmm. person uh, is telling that, of course, uh, why not um, support us with some other uh, military material like uh, boats? Uh, yes, it's necessary, but uh, I think um, um, the, the problem there, if we keep on pursuing with that kind of um, of, of argument, is that uh, uh, we become mendicants uh, to these kinds of uh, support. Uh, remember that uh, regarding uh, um, military material uh, would be one of our best options there. But I guess uh, what is more important here is that uh, we are showing to the world that these kinds of uh, irresponsible and illegal actions of China and, and the world will decide uh, out of this um, documentation that we are showing to them. Uh, yes, we need uh, military material, but at the same time, we need the support of the world in terms of addressing uh, rules-based norms. Otherwise, China will uh, justify this uh, this end no? by showing that uh, might is right and... Uh, uh, the only resort would be by force, when in fact, there are other options. Uh, 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 the, op the best option would be diplomacy and rules-based norms. So of course, we go back to the table. That is uh, ultimately the best option that we have. But I'm just very, very curious if this is the first time that China used the word crush. Uh, is that their strongest statement mm. yet to your memory? Uh, yes, uh, I think this, that is the first time that uh, China used crush, uh, but uh, that is also equivalent to ramming. Uh, they've been ramming us uh, all the time, mm -hmm. almost all of our vessels. But uh, I guess um, if you try to uh, look at it, um, those are acts of um, aggression and armed attack uh, for a plain definition. Uh, but nonetheless, the, uh, we really have to fasten also uh, the ready fit alternative um, strategies on how to, uh, uh, to, to approach this kind of, um, of uh, aggressive actions coming from uh, China. Because I think this is not sustainable in terms of um, our military strategy, uh, because uh, if uh, China rams all our uh, Coast Guard vessels, then it becomes a big issue uh, for all of us. Because, of course, uh, even if we try to modernize, if we, they keep on destroying it, mm -hmm. I think what uh, mm -hmm. uh, remains there would be our fighting steel. Uh, you put it uh, in, in the best way. Maraming maraming salamat. Uh, China always operating in the gray zone. And uh, with the Chinese Army Lieutenant General He Lei, uh, with that statement, also operating uh, around there. But uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. That was Security Analyst uh, Chester Cabalza weighing in with us.